And now to a topic that is literally out of this world, aliens. Over the past several years, telescopes have been picking up mysterious radio wave flashes, apparently from far outside our galaxy. Some scientists are seriously asking whether they might be from some sort of out of this world technology. Joining me now to talk more about this phenomenon is Kelly Beatty. Kelly is senior editor at Sky and Telescope. Great to see you, Kelly. Pleasure. Don't ruin this for me. I'm telling you in advance, don't ruin this. Spoiler alert. Some people <laughs> say celestial physics, others say life. What do you say? So the reason this discussion is happening is that these pulses are have a sort of numerical rep a repetition mm -hmm. to them that gives cause. The problem is there's only 11 of them, of them and they fit this pattern. It's small number statistics. And what they haven't told you is there's five more waiting to be published that don't fit the pattern. So, well, you know, but wait, you know, when I read the New York Times in preparation for this today, I, that there are billions with a B, billions of habitable planets is the term the time used. Yeah, maybe more in, planets than stars. In this galaxy. Yeah. So even if it's not these radio bursts, I mean, I assume you're a statistical guy. The odds are that somewhere, yes, no? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean it's intelligent life. That doesn't mean they have radio transmitters. Uh, you know, Carl Sagan, the late Carl Sagan, said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And I think we're too willing to make the leap to, well, we don't understand it, therefore it must be aliens. In this case, there has to be some underlying uh, natural cause, or maybe it's even like interference. All but one of these pulses have come from the same radio telescope in Australia. Coincidence? No, but wait, wait, but so what's the significance of that for the layperson, me? Tell so me maybe there's some guy with a ham radio out in the, you know, out in the outback who's transmitting and it's leaking into this radio telescope. Did you tell kids that Santa Claus wasn't real when they were two or what happened? I told kids that when, when they meet Santa Claus in person, he's going to be the real deal. You know, one of the things I read about this whole notion about uh, uh, scientists, people like you finding out if there really is life out there, that we've essentially been waiting to hear as essentially receivers. And then there's this whole debate in the community in which you live and work about whether or not we should be affirmative in this, reaching out. And then I read that there's some concern about that because if we reach out and we're successful, sure. it's possible that the only kind of society that would be sophisticated enough to receive those messages is one that might not that be that kind yeah. when they find out we're here. Are you, do you subscribe <laughs> here to Here we are, notion? tasty treats. No, I'm serious. <laughs> do you subscribe? To, my attitude is go there's for it. There's a flip side to that. Uh, it's called the celestial zoo hypothesis, which is if there are aliens, then they have the sort of uh, Star Trek mentality. They'll come and, you know, observe but not interfere. Okay, let's move to something that does exist now that you've ruined my night. Uh, uh, I, by the way, every time I see you, as you know, we talk about whether or not I'm going to go on one of your tours to see the Northern Lights, which everybody wants to do. Well, you did something pretty close. This past week, or recently, yeah. you led a tour of people to go see the solar eclipse. Is that correct? That's the group. That's Total, all the people you took with That's them? right. That, that's Total our, solar eclipse. From an airplane. This was uh, an event that took place in a very narrow strip out over the Arctic Ocean, almost impossible to get to. Only spots of land where the Faroe Islands and Svalbard, places that no one's ever heard of, let alone visited. We took a plane to 35,000 feet. The eclipse was low to the horizon so we could look out the plane windows. We followed the track. It was awesome. Yeah, but my understanding, the thing that makes me nervous about those kind of things, and I would assume as the leader makes you nervous too, I was reading the Faroe Islands, is that what they're called? The, the visibility from there was somewhat limited. That's right. So how do you know that you're going to hit a home run. At 35,000 feet, there thing. aren't many clouds, and that's why people do it. And it, 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 it made it that much more attractive for people because the weather was a little iffy on the ground. Although they did see it in the Faroes and they did see it in Svalbard. Uh, we've got some pictures here. This is That one was taken from Svalbard right there oh my uh, by uh, Jay Paskoff and his team from Williams College. So they lucked out, and everybody won. You're not jaded enough doing it that you don't, you're, when you look at those photographs, you don't go, oh my goodness. Are oh, you? they're awesome. That, I, if, you, if you do nothing else in your life, see a total solar eclipse of the sun. There's one coming in 2017 to the U.S., coast to coast, from Oregon to the Carolinas. Well, I'll be waiting. But speaking of uh, to the U.S., my understanding is the lunar eclipse is coming this weekend, but that this part of the country is going to be totally out of the mix. Is that the <laughs> too, case? Too bad for us. It, you, it's a good time to fly to California. They'll see it out there. This is when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow. It turns a kind of dark, murky red. And um, the good news is that on September 27th, there will be one more in a series of four, and 
we are going to be here in the prime seats for it. Before you go, something else good is happening. Some Pluto-related thing, the dwarf planet. Oh my goodness, yeah. 30 on, seconds. On, on July 14th, a spacecraft that's been on its en route to Pluto for nine years is going to fly by and show us what this place is like, the last outpost in the planetary system, or at least as we used to know it. Dwarf planet or not, it's going to be a fantastic if, encounter. Want to reconsider your cynicism about those aliens before you go or no? Talk to me after Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Vitti, it's great to see you. A pleasure. Sky and Telescope, wonderful to see you.